Ikeda, who lives here in Tokyo, has a good way of dealing with the problem. Mrs. Ikeda! First I take off the cap, then fill the bottle with water and rinse it thoroughly. So it's clean inside. Right. And then I put it on the floor and flatten it out by stamping on it. Oh, I see. It's easier to carry like this. Right. Let me give you a hand with these. Or should I say a foot? <laughs> It's quite fun doing this. So now the flattened bottles are less bulky and, as Mrs. Ikeda said, easier to carry. It can be a bit of a nuisance, all this washing, flattening, and besides, I then have to carry them to the shop, which is quite a distance. Mrs. Ikeda takes the flattened bottles to her local supermarket, which has special containers where people can put items for recycling. Quite a number of shops operate schemes like this nowadays. The group that this supermarket belongs to has these containers in all its stores, where shoppers can deposit their old plastic bottles. plastic bottles are taken away by the same lorry which comes to deliver goods to the store. The bottles collected from the group's 250 stores are then taken to a central assembly point. This is their destination, the recycling laboratory in Saitama Prefecture. Here, research into the whole business of recycling plastic bottles is carried out. Projections are made of the numbers of bottles expected to be delivered and the costs of dealing with them. Some of the bottles brought in still have their caps on, which have to be removed. Then the different types of bottles are sorted. It's a time-consuming process. Batches of 70 bottles a time are flattened in a special machine, ready to be brought into the recycling factory. Plastic bottles present us with a problem when we've finished with them. What should we do? To burn them or bury them is not a good idea. So recycling seemed to present a good solution. It's not easy. It involves a great deal. You first have to collect the bottles. They're bulky, so you have to make them less bulky. It all costs quite a lot. People didn't realize quite how much recycling needs money. We have to realize that. The more we do, the more we find out. That's what our research is for. Yes. Have you had any results from your research yet? Yeah. We've discovered that each bottle that goes through the recycling process from the outset, that is, from the time of its initial collection, taking into account the cost of transport, we've worked out it costs 35 yen. Yeah, 35 yen, yeah. There are a lot of overheads involved, you see. Yeah, so now we're making efforts to see if we can find ways of cutting down these costs to make the process cheaper. Because if recycling a bottle costs that much, then surely it's cheaper to start from scratch and make a new one, isn't it? Yes, that's true. However, there is another way of looking at it, you know. What happens to the empty bottles? They don't just disappear. They don't vanish. They've got to be dealt with. If they're treated as rubbish, then the local authority has to deal with it. And that also costs. And of course, that cost comes out of our taxes. We all pay for rubbish disposal. It's, that's perfectly obvious. And from that cost, we get no return, opposed to recycling, which gives a return. So that's the choice for society. It costs 20 yen to manufacture one plastic bottle.
Japan, 2,300 million plastic bottles are used every year, costing 46 billion yen. And when they're empty, most of these bottles are thrown away as rubbish. It costs money to dispose of all this rubbish. So it makes sense to try and recycle as many of these bottles as possible. But how can we make that process more economic? And also, who pays for it? The plastic bottle is light and strong. We use it because it's so convenient. But perhaps we all should give more thought as to what happens to our plastic bottles when we finished with them. Thank you.